pictures. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their pictures. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The remote. Hey Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help! Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, oh, oh! Should I let it go? No! Oops! <laughs> Nolik? Nolik, she stole the remote. Nolik, where are you hiding? Nolik! Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh no, Nolik's in big time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka! Tom Thomas! Here I am! I'm over here! <sighs> For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka! I ran to get a pack of mat What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great! But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light-emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack of mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's race. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. 
So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik. But what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the Mac uh, uh, um, the pack -a -mac, and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack a mat to fix a flashlight? Really? Did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka! And what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop tucking. What? Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh. <laughs>
Chusaka, no! Get out, right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed! Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over! What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight! Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on. We're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Whoa! No, Lick, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. Ah. <sighs> Come on, let's 
let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. Baby, how did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan. Run! <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The magic wand. How did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas? Your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden wish, Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden wish, Tadish! Hmm. Golden wish, Tadish! Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! Ah, ah, ah! Ah! Hey, Tom Thomas, please tell your rabbits that they can stop barking so loudly! Ah, ah! for attacking helpless little kids. Wait, ah! I'll make you bigger now. Golden wish, Tadish. Ah! What, you scared? So you're only brave enough to chase little kids around? Wow, I'm huge. I'm as huge as Tom Thomas. I'm huge! Oh, no, like, 
Be careful! Ah! Ah! <sighs> How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. <gasps> no! Why are you screaming? I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful! That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do, because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. <laughs> Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> It's hard to see their features. They're tiny, infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The magnifying glass. Case number one. Let's begin. Well, well. I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, Nolik, be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane. But I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique. So if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called dataloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Shusaka, sniff. Pick up the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. 
The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka. <laughs> Go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why, if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is. A splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there. You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. To me. She's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured an ungrateful dog. Ah! Simka, no look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane. But whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh, all the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? Hooray! The crime's been solved! <laughs> <laughs> and you, Tom Thomas, are the criminal! <laughs> that cats and dogs have a sixth sense that we don't have. What's that? Well, they feel all sorts of things that we humans don't. I better let her in. Mom and I will be home before dinner. Please remember to give Chusaka her food. Love, Dad. Oh! How could I have forgotten this? I just can't believe it. You believe in a sixth sense now, don't you? Uh-huh. Only it looks like for Chusaka, it's a sense of hunger. How much food should I give her? Look, it's all written on that chart. For each kilogram of the dog's weight, serve one level scoop at every feeding. Uh-huh. I got it. How many scoops is Chusaka? Oops, I mean, how many kilograms? I don't know. Then what should we do? You don't know? We'll weigh Chusaka, that's what we'll do. With what? With a scale. There's one standing in your dad's office. You're right, let's go. I was wondering, does it bother 
told your mom that only your dad has his own office and not her? Nah, mom says she's got her own office. It's called the kitchen. Hey, look, there's a scale. Did you know that humans have had scales like this for more than 7,000 years? <laughs> if we want to find out how much something weighs, we need to compare it with something that we already know the weight of. Let's say you need to weigh a watermelon. You put it on the scale's pan and it drops down. Now you keep adding weights to the other side until the two sides balance. Well, this one is too heavy, but this one is just right. Since the weight is 10 kilograms, it means that the watermelon weighs 10 kilos. And that's just how simply a scale works. Well, should we start? Chusaka. Right, like she's gonna come running. How are you gonna get her away from that bag? Huh, I know how to get her. Here, hold this little piece of food while I weigh her. This may be little, but it's way too heavy. Just hang on. Please, hurry up! Come on! Hurry up! Done. Her weight is two kilograms. Okay, now we can feed Chusaka. Chusaka weighs two kilograms, so two cups will be just right then. Do you think that you can feed your pets any kind of food at all? Oh, no! For them to be healthy, pets just like humans need to have a nutritious diet. Today, there are special pet foods for birds, fish, dogs, cats, and all sorts of other pets. These foods are made with everything your pets need to stay healthy, like meat, fish, fruits, grains, vegetables, and vitamins. These kinds of foods give pets a well-balanced diet, and there's no need to cook them. They're ready to eat. Just pour them in a bowl and your dog will be happy. And so will your cat, and your bird, and your fish, too. Just be careful not to mix them up, because what's good for a fish isn't good for a dog. Each animal needs its own special food. Stop! What's wrong? What's wrong? You have to take out a piece. She ate one already. Hmm, all right. So, that sixth sense, you still think it's true, right? What did you bring that for? Oh, Mom is calling. No way! How could she know it would ring? I knew that Chusaka had it. Hello? It was a sixth sense, wasn't it? I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him, but he fled. But if I told my dad, he'd say, It's, it's all inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The disguise. Ugh, good. Tom Thomas, <laughs> why do you need a second aquarium? <laughs> without any fish. First of all, it's a terrarium. And it's not for fish, it's for lizards and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! What is that? <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry, I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see 
time before. It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. <laughs> have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? Do you see him? No, he's not gonna let us catch him. We're gonna have to, to trick him into coming to us. Uh-huh. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly gonna come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm gonna get you. Hey, we gotta help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. <laughs> Simka, how long do I gotta keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. <laughs> that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. But it's not just the army that uses disguises. Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. And of course, fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So, Mr. Master of Disguise, what are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. Don't let the 
your secret out. Shh. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop. Come on, jump. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R. What's the lesson? Hm, someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. No kidding, they protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do dogs also have uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec. I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably. Although... That's great. So let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka! It's pretty 
Tough work being a dog trainer. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They hold their fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. The dog. <sighs> it's about me. Fixies? No, it's Tusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. Mm. Uh, choose Sokka. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good job, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? Whoa, whoa. Sure? Yeah, Chusaka found it. Really? Great job! <laughs> there are many kinds of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs. Like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh no, like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. Ah, that's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Ah, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. 
Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Add a girl, Chusaka. Well done. Achoo. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. Oh, finally! They understand me. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The alarm. Hey there! I'm back! Yoo-hoo! Wait! My chocolate bunny! It was standing right here! What's this, a dog? Not that one, another one! I had two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course! You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother? Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so, to save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. And so why would she take it? Yeah? Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> Uh-huh, and then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> oh, no, like, that's funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away, now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course, we need a security alarm. Need what? <sighs> The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open the door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! is the Fixie's victory call. 
When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! and raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the Fixies do and first, Find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word. And it sounds funny. But we Fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure. Without a doubt. You're under arrest! Freeze! Chusaka? Why are you stealing my chocolate? But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. 